And uh, now it's my, my pleasure to introduce uh, Stephen Toop, who began his term as president of the Federation of Humanities and Social Science last spring. Of course, many of you uh, know Stephen's contribution as uh, UBC's president and now at the uh, Monk School of Global Affairs at the University of Toronto. What is not perhaps as well known is his contribution to public service with civil society, with the Canadian government, with, NGO, uh, with, the, with the UN. Uh, I first had the pleasure of meeting Stephen in Nepal more than 10 years ago when he was a reporter for the UN Working Group on uh, involuntary and um, enforced disappearances at the worst time of the civil war in Nepal with several thousand people who lost their life. And in recognition for all of these contributions, Stephen has been recently awarded the Order of Canada. Donc la, la La Fédération est vraiment honorée que Steven dirige notre conseil d'administration, tout spécialement à l'occasion de notre 75e anniversaire et au moment où nous avons des plans ambitieux pour notre avenir. Steven sera votre maître de cérémonie aujourd'hui. Le programme de la journée est donc est très chargé et donc sans plus tarder, je cède la parole à Steven. Well, first off, I apologize. You're all going to be sick of my voice by the end of uh, the next uh, few moments, uh, having uh, sat through a, a video already. Good morning, everyone. Uh, bonjour à, à vous tous et uh, bienvenue ce matin. I want to begin by thanking everyone for being here this morning. We do, I think, have a great day ahead of us, a day that I know is going to bring important ideas, real discussion and debate, all in the service of making our Federation more relevant and effective in the lives of Canadians, and I hope more responsive to our membership. En tant que président, je, veux, uh, je peux vous assurer que je suis impatient d'entendre en particulier le point de vue de mes prédécesseurs et de puiser aspiration de leurs réflexions et de leurs idées sur la voie qu'il conviendra d'emprunter d'ensemble en cette période importante. Let me begin by encouraging you all to pause for a moment over the course of the day. Just stop and take stock of the many remarkable people who are here with us. It is truly an honor for me to stand among and alongside so many gifted individuals, women and men who believe in the power of the social sciences and humanities to make a positive and lasting contribution to our societies, our world. I always find myself uplifted and energized after spending time with so many people of substance, creativity and determination. By now, you are all well aware that we're celebrating the 75th anniversary of our organization. I think that milestones like these are important, not only to honor our legacy and, and the effort of those who came before us, but also to recommit ourselves to the pursuit of even greater achievement in the future. When that small group of Canadian scholars, including political economist Harold Innes, educator John E. Robbins, historian R.G. Trotter, gathered together here in Ottawa three quarters of a century ago, it was a dark period for Europe and for the world. We feel echoes today. The difficult times naturally prompted both introspection and aspiration among the great minds of their era. Sitting together at the Chateau Laurier, these scholars were ambitious in their thinking about Canada. They asked of each other, what kind of country do we want to be? And how can we, through our research and our contributions, help Canadians to a better understanding of who we are, how we got here, and where together we might go? Aujourd'hui, le Canada est un pays plus mûr et accompli. Moins de deux ans nous séparent du 150e anniversaire de la Confédération, un jalon marquant en soi. Mais ces mêmes questions continuent de se poser, tout comme subsiste pour la Fédération la possibilité d'aider à trouver les réponses qui permettront à notre pays de progresser. 
Our shared goal, I hope, is to engage with the wider world. It can be rewarding and intellectually invigorating to dive into discussions and debates with one another and amongst ourselves. But to achieve our potential, I believe that we must strive to have our voices heard more broadly in policy matters, in the budget process, and in all key social and cultural processes that affect our communities and our country. Public engagement of this sort adds value to the work of the Federation and of all researchers. It increases our impact and it draws attention to the importance of social sciences and humanities work. Most important of, of all, it helps provide the ideas, the information, and even the impetus required to build a better society. I want to take a moment to tell you about the archival research project that we undertook this past year. Jean-Marc said a few words about it already. To help mark the anniversary, we created an interactive digital timeline documenting the life of the Federation, the challenges it's overcome, and the progress it's helped to achieve. J'encourage chacun d'entre vous à se rendre en ligne et en prendre la mesure de la croissance et du développement de notre groupe aussi bien à l'égard de la célébration de cet important anniversaire qu'à titre de rappel de ce que nous pouvons réaliser ensemble. La nôtre est une histoire remarquable que nous n'aurons de cesse de rappeler aux Canadiens dans les mois et les années à venir. I believe that Harold Innes and his colleagues would marvel at what Canada has achieved over the last 75 years at Canada's maturation into a relatively progressive and independent nation, at our commitment to the protection of rights and freedoms, and at the growth of post-secondary education, a pursuit that today enriches the lives not only of elites, but of more than half of all Canadian adults. Today, we have a dynamic and innovative network of colleges and universities across the country, and as scholars, we benefit from granting councils that would exceed the wildest dreams of Innes and his peers. Truly, we have taken great strides. Yet, there are issues that remain, and they must be confronted openly. Important issues related to diversity, indigenous peoples, gender equality. There are other challenges, we're all aware of them. So let's be candid about our position today. Enrollment in the social sciences and humanities is falling nationally, not everywhere. Our disciplines are too often undervalued and overlooked in political and business discourse, prompting some parents and students to buy into misconceptions about our relevance and value within university education et une pression accrue s'exerce sur les chercheurs en sciences humaines pour qu'ils se départissent d'une par, part de l'offre de financement de la recherche qui ne progresse tout simplement pas au même rythme que la croissance de notre communauté. Cette situation laisse trop de jeunes chercheurs sans soutien adéquat. Comment peut-il espérer réaliser leur potentiel sans les outils et les ressources pour ce faire? So yes, we do face pressures. And yes, showcasing the impact and contribution of research in social sciences and the humanities remains a challenge, one that we'll explore in greater detail during the workshops this afternoon. But I don't believe that this is a time for cynicism nor a time to throw up our hands in frustration. To the contrary, in order to achieve our goals, we're going to have to work harder than ever and work better together. We need to sustain a continuous, persuasive, and positive conversation with public agencies, governments, the private sector, civil society, and the public. Pour que ce dialogue influe sur les décisions, nous devons encourager et habiller notre communauté à agir de concert avec une efficacité accrue en utilisant le pouvoir de notre réseau tout entier 
pour faire valoir au mieux notre cause collective. Et pour être franc, nous avons besoin de nous atteler à cette tâche tout de suite. Today, there's reason for optimism in the talent of our members, in our historic ability to help shape and drive important innovation, and now in the opportunities presented by a change in government. I, for one, was heartened by the fact that the role of science in democracy, good policy, and government emerged as an important underlying theme in the recent federal election. We all know the critical function of science and research, and it's been diminished within government over the last decade. But this is a new time with new leadership. We have reason to be optimistic, but we must also be vigilant and vocal in our defense of the sciences writ large and in our ongoing advocacy for their essential role in policy creation and social and cultural evolution. The reinstatement of the long-form census was an important first step. The apparent removal of restrictions on the communication of federal scientists is another. We now look forward to the government delivering on its commitments to ensure greater independence for Statistics Canada and to appoint a chief science officer. It's my view, and I'm sure it's a view widely shared within this room, that the chief science officer and the new government more broadly must consider not only natural sciences and engineering, but also the social sciences and humanities. Each of these areas contributes to better policy and better solutions as we move back towards a public policy process supported by evidence and expertise. Early next month, a new parliament will open. The representatives of the people of Canada will gather, almost 200 of them taking their seats in the House of Commons for the very first time. A new cabinet with men and women in equal numbers, more Aboriginal MPs than ever before. Ce nouveau Parlement aura un profil et un mode de fonctionnement dissemblables de ceux de son prédécesseur. Le ton de ce gouvernement est assurément différent. Il se montre ouvert aux, aux idées et déterminé à accorder à la science et aux chercheurs l'espace dont ils ont besoin et l'attention qu'ils méritent. At the same time, as men and women who value, research, and understand its crucial role in a modern knowledge society, we have a responsibility to hold the government to its word and to make a meaningful contribution ourselves. In the coming months, we have an important opportunity, the opportunity to show this new government who we are and what we stand for, how we can contribute, the opportunity to demonstrate our ability to make a difference and play a role in advancing the science agenda of a new government. Our participation can take many forms. To cite just a couple of examples, we can help to rebuild and renew StatsCan and Library and Archives Canada. We can contribute to shaping an inclusive digital architecture and we can contribute suggestions for how best to innovate policy to ensure it's informed and that research and evidence from social sciences and humanities occupy their important role. To take advantage of these opportunities and to meet our responsibilities to students and to society at large, we must move forward, I believe, guided by four priorities. And I don't think these can be emphasized enough. The first, a greater focus on interdisciplinarity. Put simply, we need it, and we have made good strides in recent years, but we need to go further. The old ways of working exclusively within narrow walls are simply gone. It's incumbent on us to demonstrate how working across our disciplines can help bring the innovation and new insight needed in so many areas in our world. Second, greater international and intercultural engagement. For our researchers and our students particularly, 
success now and in the coming decades requires intercultural understanding and connectivity. Look at the cultural diversity of our biggest cities. Visible minority groups comprise 63% of the population of Toronto, 59% of Vancouver and 31% in Montreal. Canadian universities are microcosms of this diversity, but intercultural fluency does not just happen because diverse groups are thrown together. Nous devons constituer et modéliser les compétences qui permettent aux Canadiens de fonctionner efficacement à l'intérieur de nos frontières diversifiées sur le plan culturel. <coughs> et de participer avec le reste du monde dans une société de plus en plus interconnectée au niveau mondial. Cela exige, entre autres choses, d'accroître la mobilité internationale de nos étudiants. Actuellement, moins de 3 des étudiants universitaires canadiens s'absentent chaque année de pays pour parfaire leurs expériences éducatives et nous devons valoriser et promouvoir l'enseignement, l'apprentissage et la création de savoir qui découle de l'interaction et de l'établissement de relations avec des interlocuteurs d'horizons linguistiques et culturels différents sur nos campus. The third priority, building a more open and inclusive knowledge society. Many of you are here today contributing to the resilience of our society by improving our understanding of participation, equity, diversity, and inclusion. We must keep asking tough questions and researching the often painful answers. For example, who is participating and benefiting in our knowledge-intensive society and economy? Aggregate economic growth numbers are not enough to assess the health of our world. In particular, Aboriginal reconciliation remains one of the central challenges of our time. I'm looking forward to our discussions today, including hearing from Wab Kanu and our distinguished panel. The fourth priority, helping to develop a more engaged and active citizenry. It's the mission of education and research, I believe, to engage peoples, people, and communities. Bon nombre d'entre vous connaissez l'initiative Fusion Jeunesse, basée au Québec. Ce programme novateur place des modèles et des mentors dans les écoles défavorisées pour raviver l'intérêt des élèves dans l'apprentissage. Fusion Jeunesse a commencé par créer un partenariat avec l'Université Concordia en recrutant des coordonnateurs de projets enthousiastes qui avaient des bagages scolaires dans les domaines d'intérêt des élèves de secondaire. Ces coordonnateurs ont contribué à la conduite de projets qui ont stimulé la participation des élèves. Par exemple, Ceux qui ont une formation en journalisme ont laissé, lancé des journaux dirigés par les jeunes, tandis que les étudiants en danse contemporaine ont proposé des classes et lancé des troupes de danse. The project's been a resounding success, and it's expanding across Quebec and indeed Canada. In the course of setting it up, what the founders concluded was that a key to the program's success was ensuring that students were learning about things that interested them. I say this because we need to remember and celebrate the passion that lives in so many to study the arts and social sciences, and how this engages the mind and the soul, equipping and enabling citizens to tackle the issues we face as individuals and as societies. When you review our history as a group, when you examine the nature and scope of our achievements, you find that we have always been strongest and most influential when we've stood together. As I emphasized last night, the humanities and social sciences standing together. The scholarly associations standing together. 
the academy and the wider research community standing together. Our words and guidance carry more sway when spoken in a united voice. That's been true historically. Think of the change that we've helped bring about in combating issues of gender bias in the academy or promoting bilingualism. And think of the role we're playing today in helping to shape a national agenda with our call to reinstate the long-form census, amend Bill C-51, respond more quickly and humanely to the Syrian refugee crisis, and engage in true reconciliation with Aboriginal peoples. Our voice does carry weight when we speak with the force of experience, evidence, and understanding on issues that matter to the people of our world. Our best way to make swift and lasting progress in these areas is through the power of united action. And with that in mind, I want to say a word now, finally, about membership engagement. We're about to embark on our 2016-21 strategic plan. As I've already mentioned, we sense an opportunity before us, and we want to grab hold of the opportunity. But as a group, we will only be as strong as our members allow us to be. The more you engage with us at the Federation, the greater our ability to support members in defining and shaping the social and cultural debates ahead. Rien de tout cela ne peut se faire sans vous et sans le soutien de vos collègues dans votre milieu. Nous avons besoin que vous deveniez des partenaires avec nous, partenaires au sein d'un réseau dynamique et transformationnel. Nous avons besoin de vos idées, de votre énergie, de votre attachement à l'heure où nous tentons à saisir de moments charnières permettant de renforcer le futur de la recherche et de l'éducation en sciences humaines au Canada. So I invite all of you here to become more active, more socially and culturally engaged, both inside and outside the university walls. In so doing, I encourage you to play a role not only in defending what we do, in fact, let's move beyond that, but in articulating our value. We have the capacity to make a positive difference in the social and cultural life of Canada and in the lives of individual Canadians. That's a great story. There's nothing to be defensive about. Today, as a federation, we're rightly proud of our history. But our focus must be on the next 75 years. And we can all help our societies to accomplish, through our work, our ideas, and our collective action, real social and cultural improvement, growth, and energy. We live in a time when young adults are told by some in a, that the value of higher education is only what it does to get you a job. That the only degrees of value are those of technical or professional natures. The danger is that they forget about their passions and turn off their curiosity to explore new fields and ideas. We must demonstrate with our efforts and our actions the eternal relevance of the social sciences and humanities. We shouldn't be afraid of asking and helping to answer the biggest questions. We have a duty to ourselves, our country, and our world to be bold in advancing our perspectives about what Canada should strive to achieve over its next 150 years. It was Northrop Frye who reminded us it's our job and our joy, and I quote, to produce out of the society we have to live in a vision of the society we want to live in, end quote. Our vision is one in which Canadians are encouraged to make contributions that help us to better understand ourselves and our world. As we look ahead, we should do so with confidence. Nous avons du pain sur la planche. Mais je regarde autour de cette salle et j'ai la conviction que nous serons à la hauteur du défi. We have our work cut out for us. But as I look around this room, I know 
that we're ready for the challenge. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much. I am now delighted to introduce Graham Carr, past president of the Federation for the Humanities and Social Sciences from 2012 to 2014, currently vice president research at Concordia University. Graham and the panelists, uh, will you all please come up and uh, take your seats? Graham will be our moderator for the opening panel of respondents and will introduce the members of the panel. We've asked each of these distinguished and wise alumni to reflect on which lessons of our past 75 years may guide us for the next. Uh, I'll join the panel afterwards and I look forward to your questions and comments on their and theirs on my remarks as well as all of the other issues that we need to discuss.